Welcome back to the Crypto Visor, where we talk about everything cryptocurrency, blockchain, investing, and of course, other news in the finance space. Hopefully, y'all are doing okay through this market downturn. So we're going to kind of talk about everything that's going on in the crypto markets. I'm going to give you guys my thoughts and opinions on where we are in the markets. I'm going to show you guys some polls uh, about where we are in the market. And uh, yes, I did sell some of my cryptocurrency and we will go through that in today's video. But first, let's kind of get the uh, the general out so you guys understand what is going on, what potentially the future holds for cryptocurrency. And then we're going to kind of uh, deep dive into this next week and what is coming up and where some of this fear is coming from. And we're also going to talk about whether this is fear or whether this is um, you know, uh, an actual bear market. So why don't we start with this? I posted this on my YouTube, uh, community tab. So if you guys want to take this poll, just click on my channel down below, click on the community tab, and then you will see this question. Are we in a crypto bear market so far about 4,000 votes, 56% say yes, 33% say no, and 12, no, uh, no opinion. Now, if you've been following my channel, I have been telling you guys since last year that, the September to October time frame, it appears that this is going to be the top. And now if we look at Bitcoin price, for instance, you could see that Bitcoin's price topped out in November, not, <clears throat> not in September. Uh, so let's, uh, let's pull up Bitcoin right here on the chart. I think you guys can see the chart fairly well. Um, let me just make sure. Yeah. So you guys can see this chart right here. I'm going to pull up the one year. And you can see that we had a peak in uh, May, <clears throat> and we also had a peak in uh, October through November with the top of, of the market and no, the beginning of November. Now, if we go to an altcoin, for instance, Cardano, you will see that actually Cardano peaked earlier than that, very in line with my prediction that the market was going to peak in the middle of September. If you guys go to my July, my August my uh, June videos, you will hear me saying September, 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 September. And where I got that from was at the be at the end of the year 2020. We st I started to see Plan B and more specifically Raul Powell talking about the September time frame for top of the market based on charting. Uh, it was very clear to me that they were very dead set on the September time frame. So I started to maneuver my... Uh, my thesis to this, especially because we knew that there was a lot of money moving in the back end, these uh, Raul Powell and uh, the Plan B, they were talking with a lot of like whales out there. So if they were all aligning with the September timeframe, we had to keep an eye on it. And sure enough, what happened in August? August, we had the EIP 1559, which was the burn, coin burn for Ethereum. We also had NFTs started to become big in August and September, and September was uh, was one of those months. So let's take a look at Ethereum price. For the one-year chart, it's probably going to uh, mimic more of the Bitcoin price because we know Bitcoin and Ethereum are highly uh, correlated. Uh, this is the one year. You can see Ethereum also peaked at the be uh, beginning of November, which is very in line and highly correlated with uh, Bitcoin. But in September, we did have a peak at the beginning of September as well. Again, this was the NFT peak. So that's kind of like where I always kept saying September, and then we were saying October, and then I said the further we go, the closer we are. Well, we may be here, uh, and we may be in a bear market because there is a lot of macro going on, and we're going to talk about some of this macro and why I sold some of my crypto and which crypto I sold. Um, but there's a lot of macro things going on that make a lot of us think that this market is going to continue in its bull cycle. For instance, inflation. For instance, other countries potentially adopting cryptocurrency. But it doesn't matter what the what else happens in the uh, Bitcoin ecosystem currently. If global markets are trending downward, this causes a lot of people who were speculators or um, needed to get margin called or have higher assets in other allocations. They're going to sell off potentially some or all of their cryptocurrency. That way they can, uh, you know, buy uh, some of the other assets that are going to be undervalued if the stock market continues to go down. Also keep in mind that a lot of uh, the kind of retail higher level, like uh, Jim Cramers of the world, like they have a little bit more wealth than the rest of us, <clears throat> but they, they 
I don't really know what they're exactly they're doing. <laughs> they got in and then got out. They were just in the the Bitcoin trade for profits. So uh, Bitcoin falls to thirty six thousand dollars. Traders say bulls need a hail mary to avoid a bear market. Now, one of the things that I find interesting about the the markets this cycle is that we haven't had that many gap up or gap down events. Gap up and gap down is basically what we've been experiencing the last couple of days with gapping down where the you just see these huge declines in the price of the crypto uh, and, and it just kind of gap down it gaps down so if you like zoom out a little bit you can see this is a gap down right it just takes a huge drop from 43,000 to 37,000 in a matter of two days this does not happen very often and if you zoom out even further you can see that there are some gaps right in May that we had this huge sell-off this was a gap down. In uh, July, we had to get a little bit of a gap up. And then also at from September, right? Remember when I was telling you September uh, through October, we had the gap up uh, experience. And we've been on a downward uh, spiral ever since, as you guys can see from this chart. You guys can see it fairly well on the screen. There you go. So this is kind of um, what we have to look at, right? We can't look at how we feel or what we think is going to happen. We have to look at the actual numbers and who is investing. Uh, one of my other polls, let me see if I could pull it up on my uh, YouTube polling here. Yeah, so if we go here into my YouTube, right, this is my community tab on my YouTube channel. And if you scroll down, you can see another, this is another poll that I ran a few days ago. It says, how much of your overall net worth, all your savings, assets, crypto, property, et cetera, is in cryptocurrency? And 70, uh, 34% of respondents said 75 to 100%, which means that most people are over leveraged or over allocated into crypto, right? Because you're not diversified. So what happens to the crypt if the crypto market drops, your entire net worth drops? And this is what happened a lot in 2017 and 2018. People were putting all of their net worth and all of their value into crypto. And then crypto dropped and they had nothing to, nothing to say for it. Uh, I know some people that were millionaires on paper during the 2017-2018 bull run, uh, and by the end of 2018, they didn't even have $100,000. They went from a millionaire to less than $100,000. So this is where, as investors, we have to look and say, okay, what is the right time to buy and when is the right time to sell, right? Uh, moving on, this is another poll that I did five days ago. I said, what year did you first buy cryptocurrency? First buy cryptocurrency. I was actually surprised at this poll. Um, Four and a half thousand respondents and 33% said 2021. And I know that there's a lot of people who entered crypto uh, specifically for NFTs in 2021. That was the middle of the year and potentially the end of the cycle as well. Um, so this uh, poll, right, 2021, 33%, 33% have 75% in crypto. 2017 or earlier people was 27%, very in line with these two polls. So this kind of makes me think that a lot of these 2020 investors and 2021 investors are 75 to 100% allocated in crypto. And this is very, very risky, guys, because that means that they have no more money to put into the crypto to buy dips. So when you hear buy the dips, buy the dips, the idea of buying the dips is that people are buying those dips and that pushes the uh, the price up because you know there's there's no more selling pressure. The the buying is overcompensating for the selling pressure. But if you have no more money to put into the market, how is the market going to continue to go up uh, outside of other events? I've also been thinking a lot about grayscale. Uh, Barry, we're about to get to Barry's. Uh, uh, poll in a minute, but Grayscale, if you think about it, they stopped uh, all new investments in the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, Ethereum Trust, and I think the Litecoin Trust in February of last year when the market started to peak. And they have not opened a uh, private placement in those funds since then. So again, a lot of uh, heavy investment, right? A lot of big money coming into the a Bitcoin ecosystem stopped. Now, some of that was uh, taken over by places like um, El Salvador and MicroStrategy and companies like that. But is it enough in the long term? Three or four companies cannot hold up a multi-trillion dollar market like this, right? The other thing that we have to start thinking about is Barry Silbert. He is uh, CEO of Digital Currency Group, which is founder of Grayscale. 
And he wrote on Twitter, do you have cash set aside to cover your taxes from realized stock and crypto gains in 2021? 20,000 votes and 60.2% say no. I obviously said yes, because, uh, you know, we're doing things the right way. But the other thing to keep in mind, and I've talked to you guys about this before, is it's very important to have multiple accounts, right? To have a trading account, to have a holding account, to have a tax account, crypto capital gains account. Anybody that I'm consulting in my, uh, in my off YouTube life is that if you are getting into crypto and you do make a trade, your entire trade the profit from it needs to go in a separate account and not touch, not even thought about. Because otherwise you get into these situations where the market starts going down, people are, <clears throat> people are selling, then these, uh, these newer traders, right? These newer people who just entered the crypto space in 2020 or 2021, they keep hearing buy the dip, buy the dip, and then they start taking more of that money, that money that was profits and set aside to pay taxes is now being spent to buy those dips. And the dips keep getting deeper and deeper and deeper, and then they lose all their money. And to the IRS, they don't care. They don't care that you lost your money. You have to pay taxes. You have to pay taxes. So to see 60% of people don't have money set aside for their taxes is also very concerning because this is going, in my view, this is going to cause a further decline in these markets. And you're going to ask, why CryptoVisor? Well, there's a reason that somebody like Barry Silbert and billionaires would run a poll like this because they want to know where the market is. So if you're a new crypto investor from 2020 or 2021, I, I want you guys to understand, like, it's nothing bad about it. It's just saying that you are a newer investor. You haven't been through a bear market. You haven't seen a real downturn in these markets. And it's risky for higher level investors to know that the 50% of people or around 50% of people in the crypto space started in 2020 and that 60% have no cash set aside to pay taxes. So if we continue to go down and people continue to buy the dips thinking, oh, I'll just recover this by the time tax season comes around. And if everybody's thinking the same way, guess what's going to happen? Not that. The opposite's going to happen. So this is important to keep in mind. And this goes into my decision to sell some of my crypto. And we're going to go through that in just a few minutes because I want you guys to understand my thought process behind why I sold some of my crypto and why, uh, you know, I look at cryptocurrency, I look at all investments as insurance for the future, right? Um, but the future to me could mean 50 years, it could mean 10 years, and it could mean two years. Uh, and I have those kind of separated. So I look at two years out. I look at five years out. I look at 10 years out. I look at 20 years out. And I say, where do I want to be in each of these positions? And some of those positions, having cash may be a smarter idea, even through a, a inflationary cycle. Because if you're in the dollar, it's not volatile as crypto. And even if, if inflation gets totally out of control, you're going to still be in the same boat as everybody else. And you still have the insurance policy on the back end, which is crypto for the longer term. But for the short term, it is important to, to have yourself a base, right? And also to be able to unemotionally say, is this market going higher or lower? Personally, I don't know. I think there's more likelihood that we're going to go lower before we go higher. Do I want to take that risk? I, don't, I do not want to go through a bear market again without having um, – close some positions. And I think that that's important for everybody to think about. Um, I'm not saying that I want to sell all of my crypto. Obviously, I'm in this for the, for the long term, right? It's a journey, not a destination, as I tell you guys. But uh, if you are in extreme profit, right? 5x, 10x, 20x, 30x, 100x, doesn't matter. If you're in extreme profit more than you would get in the traditional stock market, why would you not pull some of those profits? I don't know. Uh, and we also have to think about the stock market, right? Because the stock market is, I mean, it's due for a correction. We haven't had really any corrections uh, in the last two years. Market Watch wrote, Godfather of technical analysis says the stock market could fall 20% or more, but don't panic. This market really, really did unbelievable for 18 months. And that's true, right? Um, you know, I know a lot of people want to sell the top, but what I've also thought about is let's say, we go through a crazy uptrend in the market, right? And we hit 70,000, 80,000, 150,000, 160,000. What do you think is going to happen? Everybody's going to go to sell at the same time. And then what's going to happen? 
the exchanges are going to shut down. And then what's going to happen? The price is going to come and level out. And then what's going to happen? And then the crypto exchanges will turn on. So even though you think you want to sell the top or close to the top, you may not be able to. <clears throat> and if we go through a, a, a hyper move in any of the crypto markets, these exchanges may not be able to handle the volume. And remember what I've also told you, like more people, I've done these polls on my uh, YouTube as well. More people it appear are in Ethereum versus Bitcoin. And I've also looked at other people's polls as well. And it's the same thing. A lot of the newer investors are investing in Ethereum. A lot of that has to do with the NFTs and stuff like that. But they're under leveraged in Bitcoin. And Bitcoin is the big daddy, granddaddy of them all, right? At some point, I believe Bitcoin will reclaim a lot of dominance in the market. And a lot of the, the value from these other chains is going to flow into Bitcoin. But, um, you know, that's something to think about. The other thing we have to remember is that the Federal Reserve is meeting this coming week, January 25 and 26. And the market, I think, is pricing in a rate hike. So we've been talking about this right now. The interest rate is 0.25%. The federal funds rate, at least, is 0.25%. So even if they raise it 100%, that only brings us to half a percent. I mean, it's literally no change, and it's not that big of a deal, right? Um, but the market, I think, is kind of warning the Fed. Like, don't take a risk here. Don't make it a 1% increase. Uh, or an increase of 1%. <clears throat> Don't bring it up to 1.5%. I think that's what the market is also telling the Fed. Because also remember, I've showed you the Federal Reserve balance sheet, and it has continued to expand since they told us that they were going to start tapering in November. And by the way, that November taper announcement was in line with the top of the crypto market. So this is all kind of like, in hindsight, things kind of make a little bit more sense. But um, this is the last meeting and potentially the last major time that we're going to hear from the Federal Reserve before the March meeting <clears throat> when they are expected to raise rates. It would shock me if they raised rates in January, in this week. But I'm sure they're going to give um, clarity to the market as what they're going to do in March. And probably will say if this occurs, we may not raise rates. But what could potentially happen this week is that the Fed says – Everything the market expects, we're going to raise rates in March. Here's what we're going to raise it at. Maybe they're going to say we're going to raise it to 0.25%. The market is going to zoom up. I think that's what's going to happen. Unless the Fed says that they're raising interest rates to like 5%, I don't think that the market is going to, um, to be that negative. I think that the market right now is all going down to warn the Fed. Don't even try it. Don't even try it. Uh, you also have to remember this is an election year. It's midterm elections and that there's a lot riding on that. So I don't think that they can let <clears throat> the, the market drop. I mean, we've heard president Biden say that the, the interest rate and inflation is based is up to the fed. And obviously he wouldn't want the stock market falling during an election year. Uh, cause there's a lot riding on it. Uh, we also know that CPI or the core, uh, consumer price index, this is the inflation number. We just heard um, December's in January, which was 7%. And we're going to be hearing this month's on February 10th, which is essentially like two, three weeks away. It's very, very close. So we have the Federal Reserve meeting this week, and they're going to most likely tell us what they're going to do. And then we have the uh, inflation number coming next month. And it's probably going to be closer to 8%, 7.5%, 8%. And then we're going to have March, which is when the Fed is meeting again, and they're going to be making an announcement about hikes. So this is all, if they do actually uh, raise rates by a substantial amount, this could have a really negative effect on the markets. But even if they raise it a little bit, you have to understand that crypto right now, we believe it's a hedge on inflation. We believe it's a hedge on all of this uh, uncertainty and manipulation of the markets. But this has never been actually proven that this is actually what it is, right? We've never gone through a hyperinflationary cycle. So we don't know whether people are going to move their money into Bitcoin or whether they're just going to move it into cash. Because remember, the majority of the market, the majority of the stock market that is owned by hedge funds and institutions and billionaires, right? It's not owned by normal people. So normal people, they're just going to save more. They're going to spend less. 
They're going to buy less stuff. They're going to, uh, you know, shop less. They're going to go out, uh, uh, you know, for dinner or whatever, something that costs money. They're going to do that less, and they're going to just start saving more in an inflationary environment. That's what I think is going to happen. So I don't think that necessarily people are just going to say, oh, wow, we're going through inflation. I better put my money in crypto because they're not going to have that much money to begin with, right? They're already being frugal and now prices are going up and now they can't afford everything. Now, why would they move over to Bitcoin? So I don't think that's going to be the narrative in the United States. So this is something to keep in mind as well. But this is something that, in my view, put a dent in what the Fed potentially wanted to do, which was raise rates by a lot. Because IMF chief says that the Fed rate hike could throw cold water on the global recovery. So basically what they're saying is that if the U- – because everything around the world, guys, all the markets around the world are based on the U.S. and what the U.S. does. Because the U.S. is the uh, world reserve currency, global leader in uh, in commerce and, and markets and stuff like that. So everything does – it's like a derivative of the U.S. markets. So this is something that they're saying like Fed – okay, so – Number one, the stock market is warning the Fed by going down saying, if you don't raise rates, don't try something too too fancy. The IMF is telling the Fed, don't do anything too fancy because it's not just going to affect the U.S. It's also going to affect our, uh, you know, uh, constituents. And then we just heard this the other day as well. China warns West against rapid interest rate rise. And this is right after uh, President, Xi, uh, President Xi lowered the interest rate in China by uh, 0.1%. So they're lowering it in China. China is the U.S.'s biggest competitor right now in many different uh, avenues, in commerce, in GDP, in technology, in financial world, all of this stuff, right? China is competing with the U.S. So you have the IMF, Intermonetary Fund, warning the U.S. You have China warning the U.S. And you have the markets warning the U.S. Fed. Don't do anything too fancy. But this does not mean that this is going to be positive for crypto. Because if we think about 2017, 2018, 2019, 2018, crypto was in a bear market. 2019, crypto was in a bear market. And during those two years, the stock market was still moving up. And a lot of people were making a lot of money in the stock market. So just because the stock market is continuing to go up and the Fed is intervening, and if, I'm not going to get into all of this now on this video, but in 20, I think it was 18, in Christmas of 2018, the markets dropped and then the Fed went to the president's office, President Trump, into his personal quarters, like his bedroom, in the White House to co- have a conversation about him, with him about the markets. And then that same day, the president called eight of the banks, uh, the largest banks in the U.S., to make sure that everything was okay. Meanwhile, the banks are not the stock market. But that's what happened. So the stock market is not crypto. So crypto could go through a bear market while uh, the stock market is still advancing. So that's something else to keep in mind. So uh, let's kind of talk about why I sold some crypto. Now, let me be clear. This is a very small percentage of my portfolio, of my crypto portfolio. I am still in this for the long term. But uh, as I tell you guys, if you are in profit, there is never a, a wrong reason to take profit. I took profit in Ethereum. And the reason I did this is for a few reasons. One, Ethereum has been talking to us about this merge uh, from ETH1 to ETH2 for since I've been in crypto, since 2017, four years now. And we have not seen the merge. We don't know when it's going to happen. We don't know how it's going to happen. We don't know if they're even uh, testing it. And we know it's on a test net, but we don't know how they're testing it, right? We don't know what the Ethereum miners are going to do after this. We don't know how it's going to affect the market. And remember what I told you also, Ethereum is a huge risk, in my view, when the ETH2 merge occurs. <clears throat> because all of the Ether that has been staked on the network has been locked. And all the rewards for that staked Ether has been locked since... November, December of 2020. So over a year now, it's been locked and people haven't been able to access it. And meanwhile, the price has gone from sub $1,000 to almost $5,000. Now we're at $2,500. So it's still a two or three X plus those rewards that you're getting for staking on the beacon chain. So this has always been a huge risk for me. And, uh, you know, as I've been watching the markets, you know, first of all, if you guys have been watching my channel for any length of time, you know that uh, my viewers, we've been in Ethereum since below $400. I mean, I think that we were getting in at $200 and $100. 
And uh, so we're at basically a 10x from where we were. And there you can see these gap downs uh, right here. I'm showing you Monday. This was on December 29th. This was on the beginning of January. And then now it's like every week we're taking these huge gap downs. And we're essentially at the same price that we were last April before the major pumps in May and September and November. So we're below all of those highs, and we're, we continue to make lower highs uh, and lower lows. So this makes me very nervous, and I think the closer we get to this Ethereum merge, the more people are going to be getting nervous about it, especially if we don't even get the merge. Guys, there is, a po there is a distinct possibility that the ETH2 merge will not happen or that the ETH2 merge will happen, and then all of these people who had all of their rewards or staked Ether get unlocked, they're gonna start selling, and that could potentially put even more sell pressure on the price. Plus, right now, there's no floor, right? There is no floor to the Ethereum price. We have been coming down sh literally straight. A lot of volatility at the end of November, early December, and then it's just been a straight path on down, uh, straight down. And this is something that we have to think about, not just for Ethereum, but for all the cryptos. And it's highly correlated with Bitcoin. Do I want to get rid of my Bitcoin? I don't know. Do I want to get rid of my EADA? I don't know. What about the other cryptocurrencies I have? I think I can hold them if I've held them this long, right? But uh, Ether was specifically a trade. And uh, this was, for me, an insurance trade uh, at the beginning of the pandemic when everything was still uncertain. We started uh, buying at the two, $300, $400 range. This was an insurance policy because most likely the Ether price would go up, and it did fairly, fairly substantially. Now, there's going to be a lot of people, like, but Cryptovisor, you should have sold at 5000 You should have sold at 4500 You should have Shoulda, woulda, coulda, right? We are not there anymore. <laughs> We're not at those prices, so we have to make decisions. The market that we have in front of us, not the market that we want. And this is very hard, especially for a lot of newer investors because newer investors, they, you know, they want the high price. They want the top. But it doesn't matter because I'm still 10x or 5x or whatever it is in profit. And the way that I'm thinking about it is let's say, okay, we're not in a bull market, uh, not in a bear market, and we're still in a bull market, and we're going to go to higher prices. Well, guess what? I can always repurchase the crypto, right? The other thing is if we are in a bear market and we are going to continue to go down, then it shouldn't matter because then I'll be able to repurchase at lower prices uh, whenever that is. And the idea here is that I think, and I've said on my videos since last year, by September of this year, September of 2022, we will be in a bear market. And there's going to be a lot of people in crypto that have zero balances or very close to it. They're going to go from you know, very, very wealthy to very, very broke. And I am and have been preparing for these for this bear market. And you have to prepare as well. We've talked about this on previous videos. You know, there's a lot of traders out here that have been saying they're building their runway. And there's a lot of people say CryptoVisor. What does that mean? Somebody's building their runway. Basically, what that means is that they're securing money to cover their expenses, their housing expenses, living expenses, food expenses, whatever they, you know, like if you have, if you work a normal job, let's say you get paid $50,000 a year after taxes, maybe $40,000 a year or 35,000, whatever, we'll just say 40,000. Um, and then you have that $40,000 and you have to budget that to pay for food, housing, transportation, everything, right? Same thing for people who are not in traditional jobs. Uh, they have to create that runway so that during a downturn, they are able to survive. Coinbase had to do the same thing. Coinbase said in their prospectus to become an, in, uh, a publicly traded company, they said during a bear market, this is a huge risk to our exchange because we only really make money when people are buying or selling crypto. So if nothing is really going on in the markets, people are not buying or selling, they don't really make any money. So how does a company scale, meaning get bigger, while also saving enough to get through a bear market. And there's a lot of people that are not thinking about this, thinking that markets only go up and they don't. They don't. And in my view, I was I was thinking about this, this market downturn too much. Um, I was thinking about it when I woke up, when I went to sleep, when I was watching TV, when I was doing these videos, and it just became too much. And I said, I'm already in profit. I need to ease my concerns and I need to take profit. And that's exactly what I did. 
I didn't sell all of my uh, crypto. I sold a small portion of it um, to basically um, recover what I invested in that individual crypto. And, uh, you know, this tweet from Barry is very important, guys. You were trading last year, NFTs, crypto, stocks, you got to pay taxes on it. And uh, all of these exchanges, whether it's crypto or stocks, they are reporting these things to the IRS. So if you don't have the money and you have the crypto, secure some of that to pay for your taxes this year. Because if the market keeps going down and we go sub $1,000, a lot of you guys who got in in 2020 are going to be wiped out. And, uh, you know, that is something that weighs heavy on me because as somebody who is really big, this whole channel is about financial education, right? It's about empowering you to think critically about the markets and think critically about everything that's going on and make your own educated decisions on how to invest your own money, right? Very rarely do you guys hear me say like, buy this crypto or sell this crypto, uh, but we have to think about the macro we have to think about markets will not continue to go up forever. It's not, um, it's not realistic. Uh, markets will not continue to go up forever. So this is why I say to you guys, like invest responsibly, um, and also look at everything, be able to adjust your, your thought about the market. I did this video back in, I think September, it's called SEC is going to crash Bitcoin. And essentially I was pretty much correct. Um, in this video, I would definitely watch this video. I said, here is how 90 days, I think I did this in September. And the SEC essentially did help crash crypto because the other thing that I will remind you is when Bitcoin futures was approved by the SEC, that was in November. And what else happened in November? Top of the market, top of the Bitcoin market, top of the Ethereum market. And in this video, called here is uh, SEC is going to crash Bitcoin. I go over in depth, um, in my view, and my opinion, like how crypto is going to be crashed. And specifically, I believe that crypto is going to be crashed by the SEC approving Bitcoin futures, but um, they won't approve spot Bitcoin ETFs. I think it was plan B. Sorry. I think it was Plan B put up a, a poll on Twitter and it said, maybe it wasn't Plan B, but it said, like, what do you think would be the next catalyst to pump the price? And the biggest, uh, the people who voted the, the most was spot Bitcoin ETF. And I'm like, people still think that the spot Bitcoin ETF is going to happen. It's not going to happen, guys. It's not going to happen. And if it does happen, great, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's not. I've been in, involved in crypto since 2017, and we've been talking about the Bitcoin ETF since 2017. We've been talking about, is this crypto a security, or is this one a security? Is this a security? Since 2017, no clarity. This is by design. This is on purpose. It's, create, it's this way to create this like uncertainty, to keep that carrot dangling in front of you. Oh, the Bitcoin ETF is right around the corner. To me, it doesn't matter whether there's a Bitcoin ETF or not. There's other avenues that you can <clears throat> invest in cryptocurrency, such as Grayscale, such as Osprey, such as Bitwise, such as BitQ, such as Coinbase. I can keep going on and on. So there's no reason that we need a Bitcoin ETF. But the fact that SEC continues, the same thing happened in December of 2017. They approved a Bitcoin futures ETF, and that was the end of the Bitcoin market. Same th exact thing happened this time. So all of this weighs on me as an investor when I'm thinking about my investments and saying, should I buy, should I sell, should I hold, should I do nothing? I have to think about all these things that we've covered on my channel and say, is this the time to buy or sell? And I may sell more. I may sell more. Um, we're going to have to see kind of how this plays out in the next couple of weeks. Obviously, this week with the Fed meeting, I think this is going to uh, cause a lot of volatility in the markets. I don't know to the upside, to the downside, both ways. But depending on what the Fed says, this is going to lay down the groundwork for February and into March. Here's what I think is going to happen. <clears throat> I'm going to give you guys both scenarios. One side, if the Federal Reserve says we are going to raise interest rates in March and we're going to start raising it by a quarter of a percent, the markets are going to skyrocket. Because the markets, in my view, are already pricing this in. 
the markets are not going to really care about a half a percent increase. And again, that would be two months from now, right? That's not next month. It's in March. So that's two months. And then by the time they increase it to half a percent in March, we're not going to see any effect on that until probably the summer. They may continue to raise rates, you know, April, May, June, July, August, but you're not going to see the reaction from them changing that in the real result, the real metrics. So if they raise the interest rates, how much less borrowing has occurred? We're not going to see that for about six months, in my view. So if they only raise it by half a, a quarter of a percent, the markets are going to rally and rally per, potentially into February and maybe even into March. But I would be very cautious uh, once you get into the end of February into March timeframe because they are going to be raising and they can start raising very rapidly. So we will see what happens. Um, the other side of the coin is that they say we're not going to raise rates or we're going to reconvene in March and decide whether we're going to raise rates. So if they say that and they don't say that they're actually raising it in March, then um, the markets are also going to rally. But if they come out and say, we're going to be raising interest rates to 1% in March, that potentially could have an effect on the markets because that would be a 300% increase in the uh, Fed interest rate. So these are all things that we have to think about when we're thinking about profit taking, when we're thinking about long-term hold, short-term hold. All I can say to you guys is if you're new in these markets, you have to take everything into account. You have to look at everything going on. And you have to make decisions sometimes that you don't want to make. But if you're in profit, there's nothing wrong with taking profit. Because, and you don't have to take it all, right? So I didn't take all of my crypto and sell it, right? I sold a small portion of it. And uh, obviously, I would like to have sold it at higher numbers, but that's just not the market that's in front of us. And I don't know where the floor is. Maybe I sold the bottom, maybe not. That's why I didn't sell everything. But I'm going to continue to monitor these markets. And by the time you're watching this video, maybe by tomorrow, maybe by next week, I will sell even more cryptocurrency. It's definitely a possibility because I want to protect whatever time frame is between now and the next bull market, okay? That could be two months. That could be three years. That could be five years. I don't know. And none of us know. Anybody that you're watching that's like, this is the date that we're going to have a bull market. This is the date that we're going to have a bear market. They, they're lying to you. They don't know. Nobody knows. So I am watching these markets close and I, uh, I'm ready to make decisions. Okay. Most of my positions you guys know are in profit. Most of your positions are in profit. Obviously people who got involved in 2021 are probably not in profit. Uh, but if you got involved in 2020 or before, you're probably most positions in the profit. So you have to make decisions, you know, do you want to let this ride out and potentially ride out until the next bull market or the next halving cycle in 2024, two years away? Or do you want to take profits now and secure it and, uh, you know, just wait? Because again, there's going to be better opportunities at some point in the future, whether it's two years from now, 10 years from now, three months from now, I don't know. But, uh, you know, as an investor, this is how I have to think, right? At the beginning of the month, we were uh, critical on this channel about Cardano's progress, and I got a lot of hate for it. But at the end of the day, I'm an investor, right? I'm not, I'm not attached to these projects. I'm not, like, in it and where I can't escape these projects, right? I am in as a trade. Um, you know, I could have made decisions to open up stake pools and all of this, but I chose not to because I don't want to be stuck in a position that is not working. And that goes across the board because all of the cryptos, I mean, Solana. Remember when we were talking about Solana just like a few weeks ago and I said, I'm buying Terra, which by the way is down as well. Uh, not as much as Solana, but Solana was about $200 when I was buying Terra Luna at $70 or $80. Um, and Solana's coming down. And Solana is going to be coming down even harder because again, what is Solana? It's a lot of the billionaires got in at a below 50 cents. So now if they see the market dropping and they're like, this may be the bear market, what do you think these billionaires are going to do? They're going to sell most of that crypto because they don't care. This was a trade for them also. So this is important to understand. Like as an investor, you have to be able to be nimble and be able to adjust. Even if you're attached to one of these projects and you're like building on one of them, that doesn't mean that you have to stay in the crypto. Uh, especially if you think that the price is going further down. Like we could be going below $1,000. We could be going up to $7,000. I don't know the answer to those questions, but if I think that there's a possibility that we're going to go below $1,000 and below that entry point for me, why would I want to take that risk when I know that there's, there's 
other opportunities that I can go. Like, imagine you go into a restaurant and they say, okay, we're full for tonight and we don't have any more seats and you can't eat here. Just not going to eat? No, you're going to say, okay, thank you. And you're going to go to another restaurant, right? Most likely. Some people will just go home and be annoyed by it. But most people will just go to another restaurant and say, okay, I'm just going to choose another restaurant and you just move on, right? Because food is food. Crypto is crypto. Profit's profit. Uh, and that that's kind of a, a journey to get to that point because a lot of people who get involved in crypto, they get attached to their bag very quickly because this is their first investment. They want it to work. They want to be the genius. They want to sell the top, buy the bottom. I get it. But you also have to be able to adjust and pivot very rapidly as an investor. Otherwise, you will get wrecked. You will get wrecked. So let's kind of like zoom back a little bit. And let's take a look at Ethereum and Bitcoin back in 2017 and 20, early 2018. Because I want you guys to see the difference and the similarities between these, uh, these markets. All right. So this is 2018. Okay. This is January. Okay, perfect. So as you guys can see here, in September of 2017, the blue is the Ethereum price. Um, I'm going to have to just pull it up in individually. No, nah, I don't really need to. Okay. So you can see here, August of 2017, Ethereum was at, uh, I'm going to turn off this camera for a second so you can see the chart fully. So over here in 2017, that's August 31st, 2017, the price was at about $388. It went down to $222, which is very, very, very in line with where uh, Ethereum price was in 2020. And then it went up uh, to $320 in October. It went up in November to $468. And then it went up to $1,200. And then obviously the top was about $1,400. I think it topped out at $1,700 back in uh, January of 2018. Bitcoin, same type of deal, very highly correlated. In September, we had a little bit of a, a drop in the market and then a continual run upwards. So you can see a random walk with an upward drift, right? It's not going straight up, not going straight down, but it's kind of walking with an up, like kind of like on a hill, right? Now, if we go to this, uh, this past year, you can see uh, let's go back to 2020 when we had the lows. Let's pull this out a little bit. All right. So you can see here, this was the 2020 low where we hit, it's showing here about $100. I don't remember 100, but wow. Yeah, that was at in March when the pandemic first began. And then we reclaimed $240. And then we've been going up ever since, straight up. So are we at the end? I don't know. But if you kind of zoom out, it, it looks like it's losing support, right? Uh, that doesn't mean that we can't go back on another leg upward. But what is going to drive this next leg up? Is it going to be the ETH2 merge? What's going to drive Bitcoin? It's going to be another country adopting a Bitcoin? I don't know. I don't know the answer to these questions. We're going to have to wait and see. But this is why I personally sold some of my crypto. And I would uh, you know, advise you guys to make decisions in your own portfolios. If you think that the market's going to continue to go up, then, you know, obviously you don't have to really make that many decisions. If you're in this for the long term, there's no need to worry about it and make these decisions. But if you're expecting the market to go up over the next few years and you're expecting that income or those profits to, uh, to pay for things, you may want to reconsider because whether it's now, next month, two months, three months, we are going to be entering a bear market. And by the end of this year, we will be in full bear territory. That's my view. And it's been my view uh, pretty much since the be beginning to middle of last year. And again, I would definitely recommend going to my channel and look up that uh, video. It's called The SEC is Going to Crash Bitcoin. I think it was September or October I posted it. Um, and I would definitely recommend watching it because that video explains in depth. And I show you guys how I thought the SEC was going to crash Bitcoin in 90 days. And it was very, very accurate. So take a look at that. Give this video an absolutely free thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, giving the video a thumbs up. Also hit subscribe. I upload every day of the year, 365 days to bring you guys the latest happening in crypto. 
sometimes before it happens. Let me know what you guys are doing down below. If you didn't take any of those polls, click on my uh, channel, click the community tab, and then take those polls. I'd love to see what your responses are. I'll see all of you on the next video. Invest responsibly, do your own research, and as always, invest responsibly, crypto on. Mm -hmm.